So it seems odd right now, given what I do for a living, but initially I really thought 3D printing was the stupidest thing on the planet until I finally figured out a couple of things. So I was first really introduced to 3D printing in like 2012, 2014, and it was a cool technology. It was nifty to be able to grow whatever you wanted. Patents had recently been open source, the open source community, RepRap and the rest of it had started making cool products. MakerBot, Ultimaker, all of those companies were churning around and doing cool stuff. When I first used a printer, it was actually on a old Stratasys machine that was made in like the early 2000s that had been donated to our university. So it was still early stages when it was expensive. And we had proto type some stuff in my engineering classes and that kind of thing. But it was always stupid. Within my engineering curriculum and that kind of stuff, a lot of people promoted 3D printing and a lot of students wanted to use 3D printing, but for absolutely terrible reasons. We would have an assignment where you had to make like a board with a hole in it and kids would say, oh, we could 3D print this. And I'd be like, or we could go down to the wood shop and grab a board and drill a hole in it, which would be way better and wouldn't be the crap that the printer throws out. That was kind of my attitude. It was this really bad experience where it seemed like a catch-all tool, a multi-tool. And like most multi-tools, it could do everything, but it was terrible at all of it and good at nothing. So I really was not a fan of the technology. Later on, when I finished up school and started running a product design firm, we wanted to use 3D printers for a project that we had, for actual production. The reason for that was we had actually been hamstrung by it. I had designed a series of parts that I had prototyped with the printer, which was fine. Printers were fine for prototyping at the time. But we had designed it in such a way to where it could not be molded, and we were pretty sure it wasn't going to have the volumes that necessitated molding anyway. So we just ran with it as printed and released it out in the world. That product ended up being more successful than we thought it was going to be, which was really frustrating to me because now we were stuck having to make a 3D print farm to produce these parts. Did not want to do that. Printers were a freaking hellhole that always failed and were miserable and didn't print anything well and all the rest of it. However, we started printing these parts. We got a bunch of machines and we laid them up and down the walls and we started printing them. And there were a few things that clicked that made it seem, oh, this is actually kind of interesting. The very first one was the fact that the machines were just affordable enough to be able to do it. This was about 2017, 2018. There was no reason that the printers couldn't be as cost effective as injection molding. The fundamental truth was 3D printing had fewer inputs than any other technology. Molding, you have, of course, the mold, then you have electricity and plastic and you make the part with that. So the electricity melts the plastic and then you have the raw material itself. Printing is more efficient because it has only the electricity and the plastic. It is a better process. It has no upfront cost. It does not have the mold. It has no ancillary costs. So it was clearly a better process. It just wasn't a better process yet. That truth completely flipped my mindset about printing. By the way, at this time, home 3D printing was still a really big thing. And admittedly, it's still a big thing now, but people have pretty much moved away from the silly idea of a printer in every home, like a PC. That is never going to happen. A printer is a tool, not an appliance. It's like having a bandsaw in your kitchen. That's the equivalent of having a printer in every home. But printers for production of parts makes a lot of sense because you're able to get so much out of them. That became interesting, and it became an engineering problem then. We have this ability, how do we make it work? That became the project that turned into Slant 3D. How do we take that print farm and modify it and improve it so it could hit scale? The very first one we saw was the elimination of labor. We had to get rid of labor. Right at the time, people plucked off parts one at a time. It was awful. So the very first thing we invented was auto ejection in 2017, 2018, during the test of those products. And auto ejection allowed us to scale up immediately. We suddenly became 10x more productive than any other print farm on the planet. And within about one to two years or so, we became cost competitive at scale. We actually had a scale advantage there. And we had designed a new machine that allowed auto ejection. The other thing was the design of printers was just horrible. Because desktop machines, which you generally use inside of 3D print farms, were designed for consumer use, they have all this consumer protection around them. They're not industrial pieces of equipment. So we had to design a new machine that was scalable to where it was just a box that we could shove on the racks and go, and then they were easy to maintain or easy to replace and easy to swap parts. 
which was not the standard for any type of machine and still isn't. For a consumer machine, you wanna protect the consumers from themselves. So you lock stuff off, you cover it up, you have a nice little UI on it. For an industrial piece of equipment, it's a headless box that needs to move in three directions and be reliable for three years, 24 seven. That was the spec. So we created the first versions of the slant box to meet that spec. And basically we went on a mission against screws. We started fighting to eliminate parts and pieces. And I would argue that even today, we have probably one of the lowest part count printers in the world, easily. And that allows us to deploy hundreds of these really reliably to produce parts at scale. So I was very much not a fan of the process for a very long time. Home 3D printing was stupid. Printing in general for final products was stupid to me. It made no sense until we found that truth that fundamentally it should be a better process. And knowing that truth, knowing that there was a first principles reason that printing should be better, then gave us an engineering roadmap to actually make it better that also still serves as the core of the company. Today, even as we have hundreds and thousands of 3D printers starting to be deployed, the truth of the matter is, whenever we're competing with other processes or people are deciding how to use printing, printing is more efficient. It has electricity and plastic and you get a final product out. And that fundamental truth is what proves that 3D printing is correct, even when someone in the comments might say that, no, you should actually make it another way. No, printing is the most efficient and most effective way of making any item, period. The rest of it is an engineering problem. Have a great day, everybody.